Mr. Chidambaram, uh, the fact of the matter is that any dispensation in power, even when you people were in power, you, your government was accused very, very uh, strongly, even uh, by your dear friend Mr. Arun Jaitley, of being arrogant. <laughs> Please. Allow me to finish. Arrogant. All right, go Allow ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> of being arrogant. When the numbers are stacked so disproportionately in the favor of any dispensation, I'm not talking this dispensation, that power does tend to get to your head. And many, many people, many, many people have believed that authoritarianism, majoritarianism, uh, you know, do have a, they, they, they have a way of creeping in, in, into the systems. Now, you may accuse them of authoritarianism, majoritarianism. They say it's the will of the people of India. We've mm -hmm. got the numbers behind us. And opposition today is only doing a politics of divisiveness, of appeasement. And, we, we, and our way of governance and our way of approaching the problems of this nation are being backed by the government, people's mandate. Go ahead. Govern the nation in whichever way you want. But why are you silencing parliament? See, of the House of Commons, it is said, even during the war, the House of Commons was never adjourned. It met every day, even when bombs were raining on the city of London. Robust language is part of politics. Your language, my language, somebody who's um, under different circumstances, his language, the language in a village chauk, a village panchayat, are very different. Robust language is the essence of political discourse. Have you seen the debates? Uh, have you seen Prime Minister's Question Hour on Wednesday uh, in the House of Commons? The robust language of the leader of the opposition and the Prime Minister. I've watched the proceedings of the Australian uh, equivalent of the House of Commons. It's robust language. Now, if you are um, um, uh, wilting lilies, <laughs> that a robust language. Anyway, I don't want to comment on the exact sentence he said because that will be interpreted by higher court. But I remember a primary, a primer textbook on logic say, all crows are black does not mean all that is black are crows. Agreed. But Mr. Chidambaram, surely, surely nobody is going to like if his surname or his uh, community's name is thrown up in the air and said, why are all of them thieves? Somebody turns around and say, why are all... I, th I think you're quoting the sentence wrongly. Uh, I have seen the uh, transcript. Anyway, I won't go into it. In fact, I did not even know that Modi was a caste name. I thought the But people name, who have felt offended know that, right? That the courts will take care of that. There are uh, many nuances in the uh, law of defamation. Section 499, section 500, the exceptions. There are many, many nuances in four, 499 and 500, which would be inappropriate to debate here because it's a legal overtones and let the lawyers debate it and let the judges decide. But all I'm pointing out is, it, 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 it's not murder. <laughs> In fact, it's defamation has two parts. One is slander, one is libel. Now, libel is the uh, written word. Slander is the spoken word. And um, uh, have you, I have not come across and I may be wrong, but yesterday, um, a, a, very, a retired, very high constitutional functionary told me that in his experience, he has never come across a case where for slander, uh, maximum punishment of two years was imposed. That's also an argument. Do you, do you have an example of that? I agree, and many commentators have commented on that part in newspapers as well.